The following program is rated PG. The following program deals with mature subject matter and contains scenes of sexuality. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, Jessica. You look a little down. Oh, things are just kind of crazy around my house, Miguel. You should come over to my house sometime. Teresa and Luis are always going at it. He wants her to work at the Burger Hut. I can't picture Teresa working there. Yeah, neither can she. Your sister and her sidekick, Simone, look like they're plotting some scheme. Yeah. I feel sorry for their latest victim. Me too. Hi, Miguel. Hey, Bunny. You here to work on the carnival? Yeah, maybe we can work on something together. Excuse me. All right. You better be careful. You or Bunny will get Miguel before you do. You're being a real downer, you know that? I'm trying to stop you from wasting your life, Teresa. You cannot depend on Ethan Crane suddenly discovering you're alive, falling in love with you, and whisking you off to some glam life on the hill. You've got to look out for yourself. Get a life, and you can start by taking that job Luis got you. Waitressing at a burger joint, you call that a life? It's a start. <laughs> you can save money for college. Besides, you know how you're always saying that your mom works her fingers to the bone, and how much you want to help her? Here's your chance. Think of her. Think of your family. These unrealistic dreams you have can hurt them, too. Put them aside, Teresa. For their sake and yours. Please. Luis, what are you doing here? Checking security. You're supposed to start at the Burger Hut today. I'm going. Great. See, I knew you'd come to your senses. The hospital? Well, the doctor would have preferred that she stayed one more night, but I have to admit, Ethan, she seems fine. I am fine. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with a wonderful guy. Can you hear her? <laughs> She's crazy, but that's why I love her. Promise me you look after her while you're there, will you, Gwen? Of course. Don't you forget that promise you made to me to get out there and mingle with Harmony citizens. All right, all right. I was about ready to take a break from work anyway. Uh, I need to get out of this house. Come on, Gwen. Let's blow this croissant stand. <laughs> while your aunt's chomping at the bit. Just try to get her to rest. I will. I love you. I love you too. And tell Sheridan I love her. Bye. Well, you've totally won my nephew's heart. Do you approve? You shouldn't care about anyone else's opinion when it comes to love. If you think it's right, then go for it. Well, your approval really does mean a lot to me. I mean, Ethan adores you. Oh, well, I adore him back. <laughs> He's more like a younger brother to me than a nephew. I guess it's because we're so close in age. Mm. And yes, I do approve. <laughs> <laughs> so now, what's this about Ethan mingling with the people in Harmony? Well, Ethan spent most of his childhood away from Harmony, and I thought that now that he's back, I thought it might be a good idea that he get out and see the town and, and meet the regular citizens of Harmony. I agree. You and Ethan have known each other a long time now, haven't you? Years. We were just kids, really. We met at a boarding school mixer. <laughs> but I knew even then, I just knew he was the one for me. I've never wanted anyone else. You're lucky. It's taken me a long time to find Mr. Wright. And I finally have with Jean-Luc. And I am never letting go. You're going to meet this American girl again, huh? Sheridan? That is none of your concern, Mimi. Do you love her? No way. What, is she prettier than me? No, she's very plain like a horse. Then why do you go to see her? 
How many times do I have to tell you? She's very wealthy. She has many important connections. And I can use her in my business. Why won't you tell me what your business is? Because it's too dangerous for you to know. For anyone to know. Do not ask me that again. Okay? I should be making you breakfast. First week as chief of police and I'm being such a burden. Oh, you're never a burden to me, my beautiful, perfect wife. <laughs> mm. Am I interrupting? Oh, Eve, come in. Can I get you a cup of coffee? Yeah. I thought you were uh, working at the carnival. I was. I saw Jessica there. That's why I thought I'd stop by. She told me about last night. And then I saw the little girl again on the swing. I feel so awful about upsetting her. Jessica's fine. She cares about you. You know, that little girl seems so real. I told Grace it was probably from the sleeping pill you gave her. Could be. Yeah, I'll get that. I made this for you and your family. Oh, you shouldn't have. <laughs> what a sweet little face. Grace is going to regret it if she goes up against old Tabitha. Isn't that right, Timmy? I said, isn't that right, Timmy? Timmy! <laughs> Tabitha, we're going to win. We're going to win. Poor Grace. Poor Grace. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's a sweetie, all right. <laughs> I would hold the hand of the one who could leave the places and kiss the lips of the one who Sing so sweet, and I would fly on the wings of the bird. I knew you would take me high as breathe in, breathe out. You keep me alive. You are the fire burning inside of me. You are my passion for life. You need to rest. The air of Paris is the best medicine. And seeing Jean-Luc. Tell me if this is none of my business. Is Jean-Luc the one, or is he going to burn me like all the others? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's a perfectly legitimate question. Especially considering my track record. He makes me happy, <laughs> truly happy, and loved. Oh. Mm. I always had this fear that I would die without ever being truly loved. Oh, Sheridan, that's not true. <laughs> I guess it's because my mother died when I was so young. Abandonment syndrome or some psychobabble, I don't know. The fear was always there. Well, Ethan loves you. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful Ethan. He's the only one in my family who does. Oh, that is not true. Oh, no? <laughs> I remember my 21st birthday. I received a telegram insisting that I come home immediately. Well, I had visions of my family throwing me some huge surprise party to celebrate this major passage in my life. And did they? No. Mm -hmm. Alistair, my ever thoughtful father, needed me to come home to sign some family trust papers. I'm sorry. Oh. 
How boring. <laughs> Me pouring my heart out to you like one of those American talk show guests. No, no. I'm so glad you feel you can open up to me. I don't usually. Maybe it's because I came so close to dying last night. Make the most of every day that you have with Ethan. Being with the man you love. That's all that really matters. <laughs> Like the loser. Loser. Go away. No way am I losing Miguel to that tramp. So what are you gonna do now? Fight? Hey, uh, Roy. Hey. Nice hat. Uh, Roy, th this is my sister Teresa. Hi. Uh, this is Roy. He owns the burger hut. Hi. <clears throat> Is this your uh, first waitress job then, Teresa? Yes. Yeah, well, she learns real fast, and she'll work real hard. Won't you? Yeah, real hard. Eve, do you think this girl that she keeps imagining is someone from her past? It's a good possibility. Sam, you're a police officer. Isn't there... Any way you can find out who Grace was and what happened to her before you met? I have been trying off and on for 20 years. And always come up empty. And Grace has total amnesia about the years before I rescued her from that fire. Maybe it's time to try to find out about her past again. I was thinking, maybe if I go on the internet, I could, you know... <laughs> Look what Tabitha brought us as a present. I made it myself. <laughs> what do you think? Well, it's, uh... <laughs> It's big. <laughs> he will make a perfect prize for my game at the carnival. No. Oh. So, has Ethan popped the question yet? Mm, not yet. Oh, there have been times I felt he was close, but... <laughs> oh, Gwen. I know Ethan. He wouldn't be with you if he didn't love you. I know he loves me, Sheridan, but... But does he love me as much as I love him? I mean, enough to make a lifelong commitment. I don't know. I guess that's a question every woman asks herself when <laughs> she's finally found a man she truly cares about. Lord knows I've asked myself that question often enough. Do you think Jean-Luc loves you as much as you love him? Yes. For the first time in my life, I can say yes, without <laughs> any doubt in my mind, without any fear. He's the one. I finally found Mr. Wright. I must uh, leave you here, Mimi. I will call you very soon. You know, Jean-Luc, I'm a very jealous woman. And if I find out that you're lying to me, and the Sheridan Crane is beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I told you, she's very plain like a horse. All right. I'll let you use her for her money, but only for her money, comprenez-vous? Sheridan Crane means nothing to me. Uh, party of five on three. Five people? But it's my first order. <sighs> Gotta start somewhere. Go, go. Waitress! Where's oh, my waitress. menu? <laughs> I get the water, please! Oh, oh, you. Oh, Come on. Hey, Teresa, do you know you have french fries on your head? <laughs> Thanks. The service here is very slow. Vibes. Right here with the men. Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> I want a veggie burger. I'm a vegetarian now, so don't mess up my order, okay? All right, I'll try not to. Uh, what will everyone else have? Oh, I want a cheeseburger. No, 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 no,
this doll especially for Grace. Oh. I'll make another doll for the carnival. Oh, but the carnival only runs for a few days, and surely it'll take you much longer than that to make another doll. Oh, I'll, I'll work day and night. Oh, I can't ask you to do that. I'll tell you what. We'll give this one away as a prize, and the next one you make, we'll keep. How's that? But... You know, you know it's for such a good cause, Tabitha. I mean, every dollar that we raise for the school fund goes directly to help the children. And I know you would want to help the children. Of course. <laughs> Anything for the kiddies. <laughs> well, thank you. You know, we are so lucky to have Tabitha as an extra neighbor, aren't we, Sam? Lucky. Yes. <laughs> well, I gotta get going to the carnival. Uh, well, I'll come with you and then find exactly the right spot for the doll. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, before we go, I've got some new items for the store in the living room. I want to show you. <laughs> Something really strange about that old woman. She's always been a bit eccentric, but she's harmless. Oh, look. I gotta get to work. Maybe I can track down something about Grace's past on the department computer. By the way, Sam, congratulations on your promotion. Oh, thank you, Tabitha. I guess I better watch my P's and Q's now that Harmony's police chief is living next door. Oh, I can't imagine you causing me any problems, Tabitha. Oh. That's what you think. I'm out of here. Hey, you're not going anywhere. I'm not going to be a carnival prize. I won't. I won't. Be quiet. I'm trying to think. What are you going to do? This isn't part of your plan. I know. Think. How am I going to get you back into this house? You ready to go to the carnival? I'm ready. <laughs> I cannot get over how lifelike he is. He looks like he could speak. <laughs> oh, I wonder what he would say if he could talk. Thank you for being such a good friend. It's hard for me to open up about my feelings, but somehow you make it really easy, Gwen. <laughs> well, that's what friends are for. Let's make a pact. Hmm. When I marry, you'll be my maid of honor. And when you marry, I'll be yours. And we'll throw each other bridal showers. <laughs> <laughs> Wanna be fun? <laughs> well, of course, we have to be asked first. <laughs> Ethan will ask you. Oh, I don't know. I don't know, maybe it was a mistake telling him to get out and mingle with Harmony citizens. What if he meets someone else? Oh, nonsense. Ethan adores you. Talks about you all the time on the phone to me. Does he really? In fact, I bet that you'll be married before me. But I must warn you, I'm going to give you a pretty good run for your money. Well, you do have one major advantage over me. Jean-Luc is here. Jean-Luc. Jean-Luc will love this. He's your boyfriend. For now. But one day I'm going to marry him. Oh, it seems love is in the air today. What? There. I want that make a wonderful surprise for somebody. <laughs> a surprise, yes. Wonderful, I don't think so. Somebody out there on the internet who knows about Grace's past. Hey, Luis. Sam. What's wrong? Look, it's about Ethan Crane. Why would you say that? 
Well, you weren't too happy when I told you not to arrest him yesterday. No, I wasn't. It just seems like every time I turn around, he's there. What happened now? Well, my sister Teresa keeps having this crazy dream about Ethan Crane showing up on the doorstep and changing her life. <laughs> that is a pretty wild dream. Yeah. Well, I laughed too until he showed up last night. He did? Why? I had a message from my mother. It just kind of freaked me out. You know, last person I want my sister getting involved with is a crane. Yeah, that family's caused nothing but heartache for too many people. You got some beef with them, Sam? Who doesn't? Anyway, I wouldn't worry about Teresa. It's not like any of the cranes would condescend to mingle with us little people. Yeah, you're right. Teresa's working over at the Burger Hut. And it's not a chance in hell a crane would show up there. He is so gorgeous. I have to think of a way to get him. Soon. But how? I know a girl who's after a boy and he doesn't know it. Oh? Who's the girl? Her name is... Gee, I can't remember. But give me time, I'll think of it. That little... You better get to him before your sister messes everything up. What a mess you guys made. Well, we left you a nice tip. Well, I earned it. Oh, well, this was just practice. Wait till you see the other people I'm sending around to give you a hard time. You better not. Oh, I'm joking. <laughs> Maybe. I know you didn't want to take this job, Teresa, but I think you were handling it really well. I am so proud of you. Well, thanks for talking sense into me. Teresa, if Luis and I got on your case, it's only because we don't want to see you hurt. No. Well, you don't have to worry about me now. There's no chance of my meeting somebody from up on the hill in here. Teresa. Customer on table two? I gotta go. I'll talk to you later. Have fun. Right. Teresa. I'm coming, I'm coming. It's somebody Whitney sent to torture me. You better not give me a hard time, okay? You. Do I know you from somewhere? Even one night away from you was like a torture. <sighs> Do you love her? No way. Why, is she prettier than me? No, she's very plain like a horse. Liar. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna get a drink. to the altar after all. Mm. Mm. Maybe I should get home to Ethan. Well, you look familiar. That girl dumped paint on me at the carnival. What? Oh no. You're the guy. You're an accident waiting no. to happen. I'm out of here. No, wait! What are you doing? I'm trying to find information on Grace's past. I... Haven't you tried to do that before? Yeah, but not for years. Always hit a dead end. It occurred to me to try the internet. That's a good idea. Hey, check out the missing persons chat room. Maybe there's a friend or relative who's looking for Grace. Grace, save me! Oh, 
What's wrong? I, I don't know. I, I suddenly feel really strange. What are you going to now, woman? Shut up and let me think. What's going on with Grace? Grace, what is it? I don't know. Your pulse is racing. I feel like I'm... like I'm running from something. running from oh I feel like evil like evil is after me hey how's that search going and so far no one in the chat rooms responded well, what message did you type in Desperately seeking information on a woman named Grace, rescued from a Boston fire 20 years ago. That was after you rescued her from the fire? Yeah. I searched pretty regularly over the years, but always come up empty. And then Grace asked me to stop. Why? Said she was happy with her life and her past didn't matter. But she keeps seeing this little girl and, and when there's no one there. It's like something's haunting her. You think that little girl's someone from her past? Maybe. All I know is my wife is upset and hurting. I'll do anything I can to help her. There's got to be somebody, a, a family member, a friend who's been searching for Grace all these years. I, where are you? Your pulse is racing. Your doctor, what's happening to me? We'll figure that out. Just relax. You're gonna be okay. Yes, Timmy. Poor Grace seems to have come undone. Timmy doesn't care about Grace. Timmy wants to go home. Tough toenails, doll face. I've got more important things to worry about. Go ahead, Jessica, pick out a prize. Really, Miguel? Sure, anything for my good buddy Kay's little sister. The pink bear, please. That is how you think of Kay, isn't it? Like a buddy? Sure, Kay's the best. She's not a bad outfielder, either. Sometimes I even forget she's a girl. I've got to do something. What if that brat-faced little sister of mine tells Miguel I'm crazy about him? She wouldn't do that to you. Would she? Hello. This is Jessica we're talking about. All right. You've got a problem. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. 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 Oh, Gwen, I'm sorry. Jean-Luc, we're being rude. Oh, don't be silly. I'm the last person to stand in the way of romance. Mm. Forgive me, Gwen. I, um... Uh... But I still don't understand how, I mean, how could Sheridan's nephew Ethan let such a beautiful woman like you out of his sight, I mean, even for a few days? He wanted to come, but he had business to finish. Well, I'm afraid I will never understand that American priorities, you know? Gwen <laughs> knows that she's Ethan's girl, just like I know that I'm yours. <laughs> I'll be there as soon as I uh, finish up. So, one world. Best 
disturbed. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, my train slipped. Can, can I help you? Can Get I away help? from me! <sighs> Teresa! Teresa, what did you do to that guy? He's not a guy. He's Ethan. Ethan? Ethan Gray. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Why did you do that to him? You're crazy about him. Oh, it was an accident. Oh, God. I finally meet the man of my dreams if this happens. My life is over. Please, just shoot me. Got you some coffee, Sam. Thanks, Elise. Look. Look, if somebody here says they know Grace. Oh, geez. I don't believe it. <sighs> no, my Grace is not a wire-haired fox terrier. She's my wife, and I'm trying to find information about her past. Whoops, sorry. At least I apologized. Yeah, what well, beats the clown here? I think it's funny to jerk desperate people around with phony leads. There's some sick people out there. Yeah, tell me about it. Damn! There's got to be somebody out there who's been searching for Grace all these years. Maybe not. Luis, a person doesn't go missing for 20 years without somebody, a family member, a friend, wondering what happened to her. Look, if Grace had amnesia when you rescued her from that fire 20 years ago in Boston, how'd you know her name was Grace? I found a partially burnt piece of paper in her pocket with the name Grace on it. So we assumed her name was Grace. There goes that theory. Hasn't she had any memories, flashbacks of 20 years? None. At least none that she's told me about. Why wouldn't she tell you if she remembered something? Because that's my grace. She doesn't want to bother anybody with her problems. I wouldn't even know if she'd seen the little girl, Feve Russell, hadn't told me. Well, he was a doctor. What'd she say? Well, she thinks it's possible that Grace is starting to remember some of her past. Grace tries to slough it off, said she's overtired, but I think she's scared. Scared of something from her past? It's possible something inside her that's crying out for help. And if I don't discover what it is soon, I... I'll do whatever I can to help, Sam. Thanks, Louise. It's just so damn frustrating watching the woman you love in pain and not being able to do anything. Well, man, sooner or later, something will turn up about Grace's past. Louise, you and I have been cops long enough to realize that there's some cases out there that go unsolved. I just pray to God this is not one of them. It wasn't real. Oh, Grace, I miss you so much. Call an ambulance. No, Eve, I'm fine. No, you need to be checked out at the hospital. No, no, my breathing's fine now, really. Please, I don't want to go to the hospital. You are one stubborn, mule headed friend, you know that? You scared the hell out of me. Well, my pulse is fine now, right? Yes, Miss Know It All. I guess you should have been the doctor and I should have been the town saint. No town saint, Eve. Oh, no. I must have you confused with the other Grace Bennett who would drop everything to help friend or stranger alike. Look, am I free to go now, Dr. Russell? I've got a million things to do. That's exactly my point, Grace. You overdo everything. You run yourself ragged. Look, I promise, after the carnival, I'll get some rest. You are such a liar. But promise that you'll let me know if you start to feel strange again. Scott's on. Before you said you felt like something 
evil was after you. What did you mean? I, I know you're gonna think this sounds really silly. What is what the little girl's been saying to me? I felt like... I felt like my soul was in danger. You won't forget Timmy, will you, Tabitha? You'll come back and get me out of here. Timmy, does the expression a zip of your lip mean anything to you? Now stay put and don't get into any trouble. Sometimes I forget the Kaiser girl, too. I think she's an alien sent down to Earth to drive me insane. Didn't you know? That's what sisters are supposed to do. But Kay's demented. When she gets an idea in her head, she's like a Rottweiler with a chew toy. <laughs> My sister's the same way. Teresa spends all her time spinning these impossible dreams and schemes. I just hope she grows out of it before she gets slapped in the face by reality. Please don't blame my friend, okay? It was definitely an accident. Like when she dumped the pan of paint on me yesterday? That was you too? Yeah, seeing a pattern here? Because I am. Okay, I know what this looks like, but you couldn't be more wrong. I mean, you are the last person on the entire planet that she would ever want to dump things on. What are you doing, Teresa? No, sorry, Roy, emergency. I, I need water right away. That's not water, Teresa. It's barbecue sauce. You know, here's a suggestion. Find your friend a name of a good psychiatrist, or better yet, do Harmony a service and buy her a one-way bus to get out of town. I'm so sorry. Here, this will get all the dumb Get her away from me. No, it's all right. It's 